Where do you think the safest place to go swimming would be? A, B, or C? I think it's the B. And why do you say B? Because it looks calm. Uh, probably B, because it's the calmest spot. I'd probably say B. Oh my gosh, that's where the rip current is. Oh. That would be going right in the jaws of the rip that carry you far offshore and I hope you're a good swimmer to get back. Oh really? Well, unfortunately that's where the rip current is. It would pull you far offshore. Very dangerous place to go swimming. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh, my God. <laughs>Most people don't know how to recognize a rip current, and if caught in a rip, don't know how to get out of it. That's why we created this video. I'm Dr. Stephen Leatherman, professor at Florida International University, and I've been studying rip currents for many years. Over 50,000 people per year are caught in rips and have to be rescued. This gives you an idea of how dangerous rips really are. What is your greatest fear in the ocean? Anything scare you in the ocean? Sharks. Sharks. A shark. Most people think of a shark. Beachgoers often mention jellyfish and crabs as marine hazards, but they're not real killers on the United States beaches, just a nuisance. Waves are so much fun for playing, but you can see how they push the water up the beach when they break. The return flow of the water down the beach is called backwash, which is commonly called undertow when the pull is strong. Imagine this toy bear as a person that is being pulled seaward to a beachgoer caught in a strong backwash and slammed by an overtopping wave. This certainly feels like undertow. People often confuse undertow, which is actually a strong backwash, and rip currents. Rip currents are like rivers in the sea that carry you beyond the breaking waves into deep water. But how can we spot rips? A classic mushroom shape on signs is rarely seen in nature. Rip currents come in all sizes and shapes. They are much harder to see from the ground, which is the beachgoer's view of the water. What's the greatest hazard at a beach? When the backwash flows off the beach in a concentrated way to form a strong current that can carry you far offshore into deep water. This happens when you have a hole in the sandbar. Rips flow seaward at all depths at speeds typically two to three feet per second. Beach gores will be pulled out past the breakers before the current dissipates. We marked a weak rip current with red fluorescent dye, which otherwise would not have been apparent. Dr. Rob Brander, my colleague in Australia, has marked one with purple dye. Note that the dye plume is being pulled rapidly offshore by the now visible current. There are two strategies for escaping a rip. You can swim left or right, but you do not want to swim against the longshore current as it can pull you back into the offshore flowing rip. The second approach is to float. Let the rip take you offshore and then swim back diagonally to the beach. Many times the rip will curl back on itself and bring you to the sandbar. Do not swim against the rip current or panic because this is what causes people to drown, even good swimmers. One more thing you need to know about waves to understand rip currents. On most beaches, the waves vary in size. They crescendo up and down. Surfers will sit on their boards waiting for the biggest wave in order to get the best ride. The bigger the wave, the more powerful and stronger the rip. Therefore, when the biggest waves break on the beach, the current will suddenly become stronger. It will pulse. How do you spot rip currents? Sometimes they're fairly obvious to the trained eye and other times even professional lifeguards can find it very hard to spot them. The problem is that all rip currents don't look the same. Here's a rip in Southern California that is distinguished by the murkier water flowing offshore. The rip in Sydney, Australia appears as darker, calmer water and frankly an inviting place to go swimming. But the lack of wave action is because of the deep channel through which the current is flowing. Here are some more rips. One from Fire Island, New York, looks just like a wave coming from an odd angle. While the big rips at Ocean Beach, San Francisco are real killers, I think this beach should be called Rip Killer Beach, and then maybe people wouldn't go into the water. Rip currents on some beaches can occur on moderate wave conditions. Waves only two to three feet high, and the weather's idyllic, warm, sunny, and the wind is calm. Those waves are generated by offshore hurricanes and tropical storms hundreds of miles away. Approximately 100 people per year 
drown in rip currents in the United States. This is far more than the people who are killed by hurricanes, tornadoes, or lightning strikes during an average year. Don't become a statistic. Far too many people are drowning on surf beaches, and rip current drowning is preventable. Before going into the ocean, know how to swim, and swim near a lifeguard if at all possible. Scan the surf, and learn how to read the waves so you can detect these killer currents. We want you to have fun and be safe. Don't get ripped.